In this video, I'm going to talk about the heterophonic orchestral texture from George Frederick McKay's book, Creative Orchestration. In that book, McKay outlines eight different distinct orchestral textures, and we're going to talk about how to use them in your own writing through these videos. I'll start by showing an example from Symphony No. 4 by Tchaikovsky, and then we'll look at the Breath of the Wild theme and see how we can apply the heterophonic texture to that music. I'm going to make a video for each of these different textures, so to make sure you don't miss out on those, please remember to subscribe. So the heterophonic texture is when you have a single line played simultaneously in different ways. Heterophonic is different sounds. So what you could have is perhaps a line on the flute that is very flowing and fluid, and then playing it on the trumpet very straight. Or maybe you have it on the bassoon, and on the cellos, but with the cellos you're adding arpeggios. What you're having is the same melody at the same time, but with the variations give it a more complex, richer sound. Before reading the book, I don't think I'd ever really heard the phrase heterophonic texture, even though I'd obviously heard it in orchestral music before, but reading it there, I was able to see this as its distinct own idea and how it could be used for some really interesting, rich sounds. Something important to remember is that it's about having a single line, so you'll probably use this in conjunction with other textures in like a hybrid. So you might have the heterophonic texture on your main melody and then a chordal texture on your accompaniment or something like that. You probably won't find this texture on its own in a lot of cases. Usually it's the way a line or a melody is treated in a richer orchestration. So I have an example here from Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony where he has a massive sound using the entire orchestra. You can see the woodwinds and horns and trumpets are all in a chordal texture, which we've looked at in a different video on the main line. Then the violins and violas are in octaves uh, on that top melody, but with a different rhythm. Uh, just to point out the other things, the trombones have a separate melody going on, and the tuba and cellos and basses are holding down a pedal tone on the bass line. So the heterophonic texture is happening here with the top line of these winds, and the octaves in the high strings. So what he's doing here is he's taking the rhythm from his wind line and actually having the strings articulate every single 16th note as it goes through. So in the winds, you can see we have these dotted eighth notes, we have quarter notes. Uh, we don't have any of that in the strings. We just have 16ths and occasionally some rests. So it's a very articulated, busy, kind of motor driven sound. There's a lot of pulsing and energy to it. So let's listen to just the flute on its own so you can kind of hear the main line. And then what we have in the violin 2, the articulated version of that. And now let's put just the flutes and those high violins together. So there's two things happening to the same melody at the same time. Here, it's hard to hear. The violins are really cutting through. They're really holding it. Um, but you'll see in a minute that that role is going to reverse once we bring in the brass. So let's listen to what just these woodwinds and the horns and trumpets are sounding like on their own. You can hear that the brass are really big and powerful and they're gonna eat up most of the sound. That is most of what you're gonna hear. So now when we bring in these high violins, what they're gonna do is they're gonna add this agitation and this kind of constant pulsing and energy, but they are gonna get lost a bit behind the brass. And of course, this is MIDI playback from Sibelius, so that contrast might be a little more extreme here where they're getting lost in a real situation where you're kind of surrounded by the whole orchestra. You should be able to feel those violins a bit more, but either way, those trumpets and the horns are really going to, I mean, look at their triple four TC mode. It's going to be huge. They're going to eat up a lot of the space. Let's listen to that now with the trombones. He has this other melody, uh, which makes this very much the polythematic texture that we'll look at in a different video. And then the tuba, timpani, basses, cellos are just holding down a line. But the overall sound from the orchestra is just massive and huge. Um, hopefully you can see it's actually pretty simple structurally though. We have one idea here in chordal texture being accompanied in the heterophonic texture with this articulated string pattern. Then we just have one lower melody and a pedal tone. So there's three things, kind of three and a half things if you 
kind of want to consider the hydrophonic a half. Um, not that complicated, but huge and massive sound. So let's listen to the whole thing. Couple other little things to point out. Uh, notice how the trumpets disappear by the end in that decrescendo. It's that idea I've talked about before of when you want things to get quieter, have less people play it. So he's kind of forcing in the decrescendo by taking people out from it. Uh, and even on this last note in the melody, the violins and the flutes are still playing it, but the other winds have all dropped out by there. So it's gonna make that last note very quiet especially compared to the hugeness we have in the beginning here where everybody's in all the time. So let's do our own version of this. Let's take the Breath of the Wild theme and apply the heterophonic texture to it. So I think in one part, I'm definitely gonna just keep the melody kind of pure and straight how it is. And then maybe we'll add a couple more interesting fluid parts around that. Uh, like I've done in some of the other videos, I might kind of exaggerate or push this a little bit for the example um, more than you might see in Kind of a real normal context probably in reality i might have one line and one kind of heterophonic assistant to it adding some flair but here maybe we'll add two maybe three we'll see what happens usually what i do when i start orchestrating is start with a sketch start with piano in this case because the point is kind of how the different instruments are interacting and each doing their own thing i think i'm going to go direct to the instruments considering that this is a pretty high melody i'm going to be focusing on probably violins flutes and maybe xylophone is kind of what I'm leaning towards. So why don't I add those guys in? Okay, so what I've set up here is flute, glockenspiel, xylophone, and violin. I'm thinking I'm gonna kind of focus my main line on the violin, uh, may play around with it a little bit, and then the glockenspiel, I'm gonna maybe just highlight certain little moments, and then the flute, I'm gonna make a little more fluid and flowing line, not sure yet, what or if I'm going to do anything with the xylophone, but we will experiment and find out. To review it, the melody starts like this. So the first thing I'm already thinking is that I need some phrasing uh, just to make this a little more legato. That will sound like this. which is much better, I think. Go with you. Now let's bring it over to the flute. So the flute is a really nimble instrument. It can flow and be very fast. Uh, so it's a really good place for kind of runs and arpeggios. So the first thing I'm thinking of doing is running up this octave here to the C. So we're gonna change that to... Uh, why will you not change? There we go. So we'll get this here. Actually, I think we can... So we're going to get... And then maybe here we could drop down the an arpeggio here. So maybe then a triplet. Uh, I'm using chord tones from the F minor. And what if we put a trill on that? And could we do the same thing here with the triplet? And put the trill here. Let's hear what that is so far.
I don't love the triplet there, but let's hear it maybe in context. I don't like the triplet, so I'm gonna cut that out, actually. That would be the easiest way to do that. Let's let's back this up a little bit. Keep the trill. What if you trilled as well? And we change you. to another run um, from the sea, so. I think that could be better if it was maybe a whole octave. backing up too much because I know I'm going to want to do it here as well. What I'm going to do here though is instead of a scale, this time I'll run up an arpeggio because we're going from a C all the way up to a tenth. So we need G here. Oops. Maybe even just double this guy. So what I'm thinking here is in the glockenspiel putting a simplified version of the melody, whereas the flute, we're doing kind of a busier thing. Here I'm doing a simpler thing. take it as is because you can't get much simpler with that. Put up the octave. So here's just the violin and that glockenspiel. It's a simplified line, so it's just kind of accenting and hitting just these special, the most important moments in the melody. I know all these little passing tones, you know, add to the melody. They are important, but they're not the structure of it. So the glockenspiel is kind of outlining the structure, the skeleton of the melody. So it's a simplified version. I'm thinking of scrapping the, via the xylophone. I'm just not feeling it. So we're going to let that go. Find something a little different here. Yeah, that'll, that'll be kind of nice. Let's hear that with everybody. It gets buried very much behind the violin and the glockenspiel. You don't really hear it so much as feel it. It's just this little extra movement, kind of like how in the Tchaikovsky, those violins articulating um, in the whole context of everything else were felt more than they were heard. That's a little bit of what's going on here. I think these runs are actually heard very presently. Uh, here I'm thinking maybe we could do something a little different, maybe what if we had something... All right, so I'm looking to fill this space a little bit. I was thinking of maybe doing something in the violin here, but I think I'm gonna continue to use the flute as our busy filler guy. Um, let's see, so... Hmm. 
You can try just that. So I'm trying to see if I can fill in this space here. Obviously in a real context, uh, we'd be having everybody else playing chord tones and there'd be some sort of accompaniment part. So we're overcompensating for those missing elements a little bit, but that being the case, it feels empty. So it feels like it could use something there. Something simple like that. That'll work, and then let's have this guy. I think that'll work, and then let's have this guy drop down. So the only place where we didn't fill it up and make it super busy is here. So let's listen back. I think I want you only to do two beats. Then articulate the G. Maybe we could kind of copy what's going on here. Fix that phrasing. If we did something similar here, starting on the C. Emphasizing like that, simplifying it down a little bit. I think everything is in place. So just to review, I've got the main line untouched on the violin one, the plain simple melody. I've got the glockenspiel on a simplified skeleton of that line to accent the most important notes, and then the flute on a busy, flowy version of that line. So let's hear the whole thing back now. So I think I overdid this little middle section a bit. Um, I'm not crazy about it. Like I said, in a further orchestration, there'd be accompanying parts and chords and everything else. I was just trying to fill this emptiness that we were feeling from uh, what was before a very busy part. All of a sudden, these long held notes just felt like there was a big gap. So for the example, I was trying to fill that in. 
Um, but I'd probably scrap that and do something else there in a more realistic context. Uh, but again, the main thing to notice is that this is one melody. We haven't actually put a secondary line. There's no chord tones. There's nothing that's separate from that line. It's a single rich layer. This is kind of like a much fancier version of the monophonic texture, which was one line in unisons and octaves. This is the same idea, one line unisons and octaves, but with different ornaments and different phrasing and different flair and fill and even sometimes just some fluff. So that does it for the heterophonic texture. There are seven other textures, so please do check those videos out and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.